But I've wanted to go to Palau my entire life. As a diver, it's probably top five destinations worldwide. It's just one of the most beautiful places on the planet. There was this one time when we were in our boat going out over the water and everything was just so calm and still. And as soon as you hit the water, it's just this frenzy of activity in life. The diversity was unmatched. It was overwhelming in the best possible way. It was amazing to see really healthy reefs and such a diversity of reef systems. I've worked in a lot of degraded systems. In Palau, a lot of the reefs were really healthy, thriving systems, and you would see these competitions happening in the reef, and you would see species interactions that you'd only really heard about or read about before. So that was really special for me. The Palau expedition had a few different objectives. The main one was, as usual, to document as much as possible of the ecosystem, take pictures. This was the largest expedition we've done so far as part of the Coral Reef Initiative. We've always had the deep divers go separate from the shallow divers, so it's always been six to eight members of the expedition. This time we had 16 people in the field. We had people literally looking at coral reefs from five feet to 500 feet, and that's pretty impressive depth range. It really enables us to try to get a comprehensive understanding of how these systems change from shallow reefs, which are what we know a lot about, all the way down to hundreds of feet below the surface. And we all come up from our dives and talk together about what we saw and how that changed across depth gradients. And it really gives you this broader appreciation for these systems as a whole. From a diving perspective, it definitely makes things a little more challenging. Myself and the other dive officers, there's usually one additional one on the trip, we have to manage the safety of the deep team and also the safety of the shallow team. Our biggest challenge is figuring out how to move all this equipment across the world and making sure it gets there on time and clears customs and does not get damaged. One of the things that we did was deploy a variety of different sensors in a seagrass bed. There's a school right now of thought that seagrasses may be beneficial to coral reefs or to surrounding ecosystems because of their ability to modulate carbonate chemistry in the water. Because they're such strong photosynthesizers, they can pull carbon dioxide out of the water and maybe that has a positive effect for downstream calcifying communities like coral reefs. Hopefully that information will feed back into our understanding of how to design marine protected areas and cater to conserving these systems on a holistic level. Coral reefs are threatened and a significant amount of the ocean life resides on coral reefs, about 25% of it. They're vitally important to us as human beings from everything from the economy, for fishing, for sustenance, for ecotourism, and also for protection from storms and erosion and so on, and then for life in the ocean. They're vitally important. With our Hope for Reefs initiative, we are trying to explore, explain, and sustain the world's coral reefs. And it sounds like a huge endeavor, and it is, but I think the Academy is very well positioned to be a leader in that effort. We're the only place in the world where we have the science, the conservation, and the outreach all together in the same building. There is a real urgency to study these poorly known places that have such a richness of life. And I think that is what the Coral Reef Initiative is all about. And then once you know a little bit more about these places, what that information tells you about how you can more effectively manage and protect it for coming generations.